So I'm kind of cleaning up my gear here, analyzing the data from uh, the field trip here that I've taken, and specifically for APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System, with the uh, Yesu FT1 Delta built-in APRS GPS tracker and many other functions too. It could do other things other than that. You don't necessarily have to play with the GPS function if you don't want to be found. You can send uh, text messages and uh, emails uh, over the air uh, without having to give lo your location. And this unit does it. I think I demonstrated that before. But what I want to do here is uh, kind of analyze the data that we got so far from my uh, winter trek mock bug out and give a kind of like a little explanation of what went down. There's two things that I wanted to test out in this particular outing. One, reporting my positions over the uh, air uh, and feeding it into the internet out there with receivers out there that other hams have, just as listening posts or whatever. And uh, my family and you guys, of course, were able to track me. Uh, not as much data beacons out there, I, even though I transmitted a shitload, just the terrain sort of prevented me from reporting as many as, as I would like. Uh, there just wasn't enough digit repeaters out there, and the uh, terrain itself can't sort of block my signal from getting out. I mean, this only puts out 5 watts. That's not much to get out there if you're deep in the canyon. I mean, VHF and UHF radio waves cannot penetrate uh, granite, and, and it does not... Uh, skip on the uh, atmosphere and back down again like HF. So this was me out there in the field. This little guy right there. And there's a house out there or somebody's home that has a receiver. They call it an eye gate. And what that does is it'll take my digirepeater signal. I'll transmit out. And if I'm in a canyon or over the hill, over the mountain, it'll hit this hilltop here that has a digirepeater. Uh, and it's just that. It takes my digital signal and repeats it again out to the real world for farther range. And usually these radials are significant in power from uh, 5 watts, like the one I have somewhere, to 40 watts with a high gain antenna, which will reach quite a ways, uh, 40, 50, 80 miles uh, for one hop. So it went up, then hopped over to a house somewhere, and that was fed into the uh, internet where you guys were able to log in and track me and I was only off of one hop uh, I wanted to experiment to see if it would go bypass the web here and just go straight to my house because I have a receiver here like somebody's home or scanner however you want to interface it into your laptop computer uh, through the sound card and it, the software, there's free software out there that could decode those uh, tones, those digital data, and place your position up on the screen. Unfortunately, my system here, this laptop, this old one here, uh, gave me the blue screen of death when uh, I came home. So uh, all that data that I sent out was uh, lost. But I'm, I'm assuming that none ever reached this location. When I looked at the data coming from uh, APRS.FI, I see no evidence of that particular digirepeater ever making it to my home. So I don't think I was able to get a, any hops over to come over to my home to log it over the air. So that was a dud. Uh, but if there were more digirepeaters out there in the field, then I could have made it home. Because uh, my digirepeater was configured to do two hops and then that signal will kill itself. So meaning, up to the mountain, digirepeat, one hop, two hops, and hopefully make it to either an eye gate or my home. And then that signal from this hops here would die, die out. Uh, on the amateur radio service, this is good practice to have no more than two, one or two hops because that's all you need. Actually, you need one hop. Uh, there was this one time and one of the guys in the, in the comments in another video, the first video, called me out on it. Uh, I did three hops just to try it out because I was deep in the canyon 
and uh, I wanted to see if, if that could make it home. Uh, there's no way for me to tell, but I just did it anyway. So that would have been over to the digit repeater, hop once, hop twice, hop three times, and maybe over to an eye gate or my home over here. But that didn't happen. I mean, my signal did get out there, and but it didn't make it to home, but it didn't make it to an eye gate. Because uh, that other guy was able to see what I was doing and say, hey, that's that's not cool practice. And it's not. But in a pinch or experimenting like I did, it's perfectly okay. But there's enough stuff out there in the field where you don't have to go this extreme. One or two hops is good enough in a uh, metropolitan area. Uh, they recommend doing the three hops or more if you're like really far out in the back country somewhere. Me, I wasn't. I was in between, you know, civilization and in the wilderness. So two hops would have been good for me. And for the most part, it was two hops, and I was able to get some beacons out and logged into the internet, and that was good enough. So here was the trailhead right here, and I made my way down, almost towards the bottom of the uh, canyon here along the river, midpoint between the river and the edge the uh, ridge up here so I didn't get a signal out until I reached this point right here and as you see there it shot up to Buck Rock over here and from this location to the trails over here was 20 miles so I was able to negotiate this particular ridge over here from this location here and from there you can see I was at 6300 feet this particular place here was 5,000 feet. Let me see, way on top here, my final destination. I was at 7,730 feet. And they were all being sort of uh, uh, captured by this digit repeater right up here, K6IXA at Buck Rock. And from there, it repeated it out to a house or somewhere down here in the valley where it was pumped into the internet where all you guys and myself could see it. And as you can see there, uh, it was some pretty steep canyon walls here where it was hard to get anything coming out of here. And I was beaconing uh, quite often, especially when I got out to like a, uh, a knoll here, like this point right here or uh, right here. Somewhere that protruded out in the middle here somewhere uh, that I thought could get my signal out like uh, the top of this finger here there's another top of the finger here and I was on top of this particular finger here uh, heading upwards yeah. on this exercise here you can see where uh, I sort of covered both extremes of the spectrum there from the hobbyist out there just wanted to dick around with APRS uh, finding his location and stuff to the other extreme of total societal collapse where you won't have the web anymore uh, for me to get my signal over to my house I need more digit repeaters out there in the field for it to bounce to go over to my house which is somewhat possible in my area but uh, you are dependent on other people's gear being up and running uh, if I had the money and the uh, the ability I could definitely put my digi repeater here, here, and possibly here. So if this is my route coming home, I could get one of these three digi repeaters to over the air send my messages back home, and that could be a range of 120 miles to two uh, to 300 miles. It's quite possible, but it's quite expensive too. You figure you have to get a, a another radio, uh, another TNC, uh, and you know, as you can see in my other uh, videos, uh, the ability to go up to these mountains and and hide it up there somewhere, or, or uh, power it up with with solar and all that stuff. So I mean, it's. It, within your means, and I don't have this mean, I have one digit repeater out there already. That's about it. And for the most of us, or for the most 
practical purposes, uh, disaster preparedness, this is perfect because then you would have one or two digit repeaters and a disaster could happen over here like uh, earthquake, wildfire or whatever, riot, but you can hit a digit repeater over here, it'll repeat your signal to a safe house somewhere out here where nothing's going on, you're miles away from this, lo this madness over here and it could be pumped into the web where your family over here could see where your location is uh, in, re in relation to where the disaster is and have peace of mind. All this is just peace of mind in my book for both parties, my, my family and myself. So uh, with that, that comes with motivation to keep going and with motivation you could, uh, you know, continue on with life. So I'm in, the, in this draw here and that's my goal up there but I want to send out a beacon, an APRS beacon but I'm flanked by hills so I'm down in this trough here and there's a repeater, digi repeater down south that way, 50 miles away no way this radio could do it but I'm going to try, I'm going to send out a beacon maybe for some miraculous reason it'll send it out and I'll pick something up but I haven't been hearing any beacons coming my way. So uh, that tells me that there, you know, yeah, actually there is some beacons coming in. Let me see. Oh, very weak. It's very weak. I'm going to send a beacon out anyway. And I don't get a response. Usually you'll get the duplicate response back, repeat it from that digi repeater somewhere out there. Some. I'm going to do it again. Maybe, hopefully, that... Uh, something came back. Let's see. That was somebody else. Function number nine. Okay, I don't get a response back from that, so more than likely it hasn't gone out. You guys will probably know. I don't know. I would have to consult the uh, the log. Good morning, sunshine. It's day three, and that there in front of you is pretty much what I uh, hiked for the past couple of days. The exciting thing about this point right here is I was get I was able to get a beacon out. So this that I know for sure hit some digi repeater somewhere because I get a a uh, acknowledgement. The digi repeater will repeat the uh, transmission that I sent out and whatever digi repeater is out there got it, sent it right back out but it was close enough for me to get that acknowledgement back. So I know for sure that I was able to get a beacon out to the world. So let's see if I could do that again. There's my beacon. I didn't get anything back. Let's try that again. Oh well. But I was able to get at least one signal out. So there you have it. Alright guys. I'm still drudging up this hill here. But uh, I'm a little bit higher than I used to be here. I could somewhat see the horizon there. Across the valley I would imagine. So I'm going to attempt to uh, send out another beacon here. There we go. No acknowledgement yet. Another one. Why is it that when I want to put this on film, it doesn't want to do a uh, return? But I was able to get a uh, beacon out, and I was able to hear the message come back from a uh, digi repeater out there. That would have definitely made it out to a night gate somewhere and fed through the computer. Okay, let's see if I can hit it one more time before I turn this knoll over here. I'll probably be out of sight, out of alignment of uh, whatever is out there. Yep, got it. That was my beacon beaconing back from a uh, digi repeater out there in a the field somewhere. Maybe down south, maybe down up north. Don't know exactly until I look at the log, 
on APRS.FI. So, uh, yeah, that's a perfect example of uh, APRS. This is somewhat of a poor man's version of the spot service. You know, the uh, that satellite sort of transmitter does the same thing, exact same thing, only that it's more reliable as far as being the birds up in the sky there listening to your signal where I have to rely on terrestrial, uh, what do you call it, digital repeaters out there to do the same thing but uh, I don't have to pay a hundred and twenty something bucks a year or a month or whatever the charges are so uh, I'm a cheap ass I know but uh, the spot service if you do this quite often it's it's uh, worth the investment I think just so you know that peace of mind that if uh, you slip and fall over this ledge over here or something they could at least recover your body I think this will be a good place for a beacon right here out in the open this sort of knoll is sort of uh, reaching out that way a little bit so here's a beacon whether somebody got it or not I don't know Try this way. I didn't get an acknowledgement back, so I don't know if it's gone out or not. Okay, I'm looking straight down the canyon here. See if I could get a signal out there. Yep, got one out. Cool. So even though I'm flanked by this ridge over here and that ridge over here I get some activity out that way so for sure if I haven't gotten a kickback or a repeated beacon back to me I might have just logged into a receiver out there somewhere that doesn't do a, any transmit just receives a listen only station so all these beacons that I've been sending out manually mind you possibly have been picked up but I don't know until I get home and uh, I've been doing it manually, the beacons, because uh, it, I just see that it saves power that way. More so if I just let it run on its own like every 30 minutes or something like that. I sort of take a survey of the terrain and say, yeah, I think my radio waves could go that way quite a bit. So let me try it from this location. This is a good vantage point to cover this whole canyon here. 